Seven o'clock. Lisa, would you spell your last name for me, please? Sure, it's B-O-Z-Z-U-T-O, -Z -Z -U -T -O. Bazuto. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. And who was the other person that was on the phone? On the phone? Nellie, Nellie, Nellie. Wilson. But, okay, but thank you, Nellie. Right yep, thanks, Nellie. Mm -hmm. First up, we're gonna start. We need to approve the minutes from the February, what is, what is January. January 26th meeting? I, guess I make a motion. I, I, I would like to hold for a second. Okay. You know, for two meetings in a row, at the end of the meeting, I have brought up the issue of what's going on in Mackinac Shores. And in none of our minutes is that, um, is that evident. And at the end of this meeting, we're going to go back there because I've been back there. And I would like that or my testimony to be reflected in the minutes of our meetings. That's fine. John, you, do, you, do you wanna, we can amend the meeting minutes if you wanna uh, give us a synopsis of what you would like added. Um, I was just um, a little bit concerned that, you know, I personally don't know if any reprimand or fine has been levied on the perpetrators to those nine boulders that are in Stockbridge Bowl and the complete lack of compliance to the plan that they presented to us originally. And I think that just for the record, that needs to be kept on the record and pursued further. I do not believe we've gotten any uh revised plans on how they intend to correct the issue. Well, I would suggest if we were to impose a fine upon them that we might get faster action. Well, we did hear from Steve Mack and I sent the, his reply to everybody. So um, they are not able to work at the moment. Is there still a stop work order? Mm -mm. No. no. I don't think that it was ever applied for, was it? No, we did. We did an informal one. Should we do a formal one? Well, I mean, the, the point was that we would um, have them fix the problem, and which in which case a stop work order would be counterproductive. Well, how many months has it been? Oh, probably two or three. Oh, that's fine and dandy. Um, I mean, where I'm going with this is, is that, you know, we have these meetings, we discuss these issues, we discussed this issue specifically, and I was suggesting that we um, contact them, which evidently Sally did, but it'd be okay. nice to, it would be nice to know what they said in return and then come back with another return to them saying when weather conditions are favorable to continuing the work, you do X, Y, Z. Um, but this thing seems to be fading away into the sunset and I'm personally not gonna let it do that. Okay. Can, um, if, if they, I have one question. If they build the house, can you have the equipment to remove the boulders, get into the lot? No. Well, then this we is, have to deal with it now, right? The, yeah, they have. I, as far as I know, Patrick and John, everything is on hold. They they started down there because there isn't enough space to get past the foundation, the new house foundation building, whatever they're putting in there, to get to the lakefront. So everything's put on hold till they correct the lakefront building. Any any future work is not going to happen. Right. My concern, I guess, is, is that they presented us with a plan. I remember being down there with 
you, Ron, and Jamie, and Sally, and so forth. And the plan seemed to look okay to us. Well, then we go down there and take a look at where the plan has evolved to at this point, and it has nothing to do with the plan that was presented before us. So my thing, my concern is, is that when people do this, that there be some sort of retribution. Yeah. I mean, Can just, I ask a question on procedure? Is this on the agenda? And if it's not, are we running risk talking about it? No, I think if, you can bring up stuff. This, this, has to, this has to do with the minutes of the last meeting. Okay, I'm Andrew. just making sure, you know, for obvious reasons, okay. So anyway, that's, um, you know, if, if we're gonna have this discussion at the end of the meeting, so be it, we'll put it in the minutes for next week, for this meeting, but, you know, it's gone by the wayside in two separate meetings um, with regard to the minutes. You know, other than that, I would vote to accept the minutes from the last meeting of January 26. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, minutes passed. John, we, if we can't do this, we will put it on the, on the agenda for the next meeting. I don't know, we'll see what we can do at the end of this meeting. All right, thank you. And Ron, this is Jamie. I just have a question about 82 Interlaken Road, but it's not on the agenda. So I don't know if there'll be time at the end or maybe next meeting, because I had some follow-up questions. Because 82 Interlaken is closed. OK. So unless it's a violation issue, then. No. Um, don't remember voting like that we completely voted on it we did okay all right it's my understanding that the planning board has some issues with things um but that's not us but i don't want to digress our meeting so okay all right All right, first up, I mean, that, that would kind of be the informal part of that. Does anybody else have any informal things? What about Greg? Anyone new here? Greg Patrick? Wellencamp is here. Greg Wellencamp uh -huh. is here. Is he? To, yeah, to talk about 74 Interlaken Road. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sir. 78 Interlaken Road. 78, 78. sorry. Sir, from so, appearances, and I've not been on the property. So the question I have is we're, we're presently there and we're working on getting rid of honeysuckle mainly and dead ash trees. And I just need clarification, how far to stay away from the lake, 100 feet or 200? It's not so much a question of how far to stay away is that you need to come and ask us. You've, and ask when, I when I'm, yeah, but the question I've always, I have is when, when we're, when we're, how far from Stockbridge Bowl is what I'm asking. 200 feet. Okay, and then Brent said that's in a bylaw and- Yes. Is it in? So I tried to find it. Is it under a town bylaw or a zone? town bylaw? It didn't stop site under Stockbridge, you know, or, and then look under bylaws and then it, it's a download. So you just open it. Right. No, I looked. So it's under the, I'm looking now, it's under the town bylaws, not the zoning bylaws or, or Berkshire Scenic Mountain Act. Yeah. Right. It's in the town bylaws. The town wet, the wetland bylaws is um, number seven. Okay. And if I want to clean up invasives and dead ash trees closer than 200 feet, what's the procedure? You should file a request for determination of applicability. Okay. 
Then we do a site visit, I think, right? And we just. We do. Right. Because we want to um, know what's being cut, how it's being done, how, how you're protecting the lake. Um, are, do you have open soils? Uh, you know, there are a lot of questions that we have when people are working around the lake. Okay. So yeah. basically you could tell us when we show up for the site visit, exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it and why, well, we can, you already told us why, okay. um, and what your scope of work is going to be. Okay, so I, I'll do that. I'll submit either I will or I'll have white engineering submit an RDA. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now to scheduled. All right, before um, we get to that, who is 441617? I see 441617, looks like Joe. Is that Joe? Me. Who is it? It's me, Stella. Oh, Joe, okay, all right, thank you. All right, thanks. Request for certificate of compliance, 16 Beachwood Drive. Still not there. Notice, Notice of intent, of we've not seen, we've got had a formal request to withdraw. All right, the so next one. Next is Sam Mercier. Request for determination, 6 Mackinac Road. Yep. Who's here? I don't, I don't see Sam on the list of participants. All right, we'll continue that. If somebody shows up, we'll go back. Uh, request for determination, Kate Pritchard, 16 Yale Hill, tree removal. Yep, Nellie Wilson is here. I am here. Nellie. Yeah. Tell us what you, you want, to, what you, <laughs> or how you're going to do this. Um, I I guess you need to tell me what more what what you're what you mean by that. <laughs> do you have my RDA there? Yes. I did. I did include a description of the work and how we're planning to process the the trees, et cetera. Um, there are three trees north of the barn on the property line that are uh, starting to crack the foundation and they also lean over the roof at the same time for looking for light. Um, so these folks, ha I think they've owned the place for a year and are realizing that it's undermining this uh, sort of historic barn there on their property and want to take them down. They're Norway maples that have, you know, volunteered themselves there. Um, so we were going to come in from the front of the property and uh, along that property line and cut them down and, and remove them out to the street. Um, stumps will stay in place. Hopefully they won't stump sprout too quickly. And uh, they are the, they're really close to the Campusa Brook. So I didn't want to go ahead without you guys, you know, giving me the okay to do anything there. Right. You also have um, at the you're trimming a maple on the campus side a, of the yeah, front. Yeah, it's yeah, it's directly behind the barn. But all we're doing is t taking the limbs that are uh, overreaching the roof and could potentially damage the roof from on that tree. There's there's no um, removal of that tree at all. It's still standing. Can you see what I'm holding up? Yeah. Ron? I, yeah. Okay, so that's the plan. Are you going to put equipment behind the building? No, there's no way to get equipment behind the building. So this will all be done by hand it's with ropes. Be done, it's going to be done 
um, accessed along the property line with number 18. Um, we will either climb or we have an arborist lift that will come along the front and just next to the barn. It's, it, there, it, it, we're not, we won't be anywhere near the edge of the brook to remove these. Does that make sense? Yeah. The the branches that are are going to be chipped and take to, taken away or just yep. removed. Yep. As will the wood, but we're we're not going to grind the stumps or anything. They're actually too close to the building to get a, a grinder in there, and we wouldn't want to that close to the stream anyway. Um. Um. They're Norway maples. Are you, are you going to plant anything in, in their place back there, maybe closer to the brook or anything like that? Only if you guys request it. How That's shaded why I'm is here it? tonight. How shaded is it back there? It's extremely shaded back there. There's a lot of Norway maples back there. So how much of a how much of an impact do you think this is going to have on the shading? on the shading mm -hmm. probably not a lot they are not that large the trees they're the largest one is 16 inch diameter at breast height um so the 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 maple tree which is a sugar that's behind the barn on the on the stream bank its canopy actually pretty much covers over to a certain extent it i mean it, I, it if you were going to I don't know how to how to estimate it, particularly not in the winter time <laughs> when there's no leaves. Um, but I mean, they're Norway maples. They they do certainly create a lot of shade. So that I think a site visit, you might be easier to determine what that that question might am, be the answer to. So are are they marked, Nellie? Um. I don't know that I marked them when I went. It was a long time ago that I was there. Um, I gave them this proposal in September um, and have been trying to get to you guys ever since. So um, I can certainly run up and mark them or I can you know, meet some, some of the members there if they wanna walk back and look at it. It's entirely up to um, you guys and your schedule. So the maple that you're trimming, is that the sugar maple? That's the sugar maple directly behind the barn. It's probably within five feet of the stream. Okay, and but you're like said, wanting to tr trim that, why? We're just trimming the branches that are over the roof because it's, it's starting to moss. The roof is starting to deteriorate because it's so shaded back there from that tree and from these Norway maples. All right, um, I think we need to do a quick stop by and look at this. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to taking the trees down by the uh, foundation, but I would like to just take a quick look at this whole scenario. Sounds um, like a plan. Ooh, I don't know if we got anything else we're gonna need to see. <laughs> well, let's, let's take make this the priority. You were up first. Um, okay, I'm I'm pretty free right now at this point in time. So, so whenever you okay. guys, I'm okay. given the given the new restrictions, we probably don't want to do it until Friday, so I can post it tomorrow. Okay, I'm fine. What time? Morning or afternoon? Morning. I can't do afternoon. 10 o'clock. Okay. Friday morning. Friday, and that will be February. February. And what's the address again? 16, 16 Yale Hill. Okay. Ah, it is Chinese New Year on Friday. <laughs> All righty, so I will meet you guys there. If you if you can't make it and you mark the trees, that will be fine. Them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm signing off now. That's okay. Take care.
Have a good evening. Thanks. Um, next, notice of intent. 19 Lakeview Drive. We should probably switch those actually and um, address the certificate of compliance first. All right, yeah, because that's got to be signed off on. Demolition replacement of existing house associated site work. Um, so that was the previous filing, which never got done. So we just need to sign off on that. It's been. Yes. Um, it, uh, Jackson, are you there? I am. I'm here to answer any questions you okay, might have. Okay, so about. no work at all has been done on that under that I, order, right? Um, Except no. the removal of the dock. Are we talking about uh, 19 Lakeview? Oh, we're talking about 19 Lakeview Certificate of Compliance? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I believe uh, we had established that. Uh, in uh, 2019, no order of conditions was actually issued. Um, the applicants, the Kennelys, withdrew their application before an order of condition was ever issued. So there's uh, no COC necessary for that filing number. Or, yeah, for that NOI. Okay, do we have a letter of withdrawal for that? I don't think we uh, had anything written or at least I don't uh, right now I can uh, look back and try to find some uh, email documentation about it um, but I'm not sure if a formal letter was ever submitted okay so we should probably have if we didn't get something formal we should probably have something formal and we probably should still close out that file number yeah understood uh, do, you, do you know the procedure to go about that closing it out when there is yeah it's just a certificate of compliance that says no work was done okay even if an order of conditions wasn't issued yeah just makes life simpler all right all right so would you like us to go ahead and submit a request for coc then i don't i don't believe we've done that yet um well yes Now that I remember, I think we never issued the order of conditions because they never removed the dock. Yeah, I believe the dock was a sticking point um, for that notice of intent. Um, and then it, it was continued a couple meetings and then the the Ken, Keon Kennelly's uh, decided to withdraw their application and, and ended up selling the parcel. Um, and, and here we are now. <laughs> yeah. So I maybe just a letter. Okay. Yeah, stating can, that no work was done, and we'll just we'll issue the certificate of compliance saying that no work was done, and then we'll be done. All right, I'll do that. I'll uh, I'll submit a request for COC and a letter stating nothing was done, um, and then we can move from there. This DEP does not like open. Yeah, I was wondering how that would be handled. Since yeah, it's a little it's a little odd, but this will clear it all up. Understood. Okay. All right, so we'll submit that request for COC then. Awesome. So then we'll go back to 19 Lakeview Drive, um, the current submission. Gotcha. Same prop, same property. Yes. Same demo. Well, new. The end result. New filing. Same, new filing demolition is still going to happen. I can uh, I can share the the site plan on the screen if that's helpful. Yeah, why don't you? There's there's those here that didn't make the meeting or the site visit. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. The only uh, issue I had the only issues I had was the number of trees. Yes, but uh, they after, were all within uh, areas of work. Yep. Yeah. After uh, we had spoke, Ron, uh, on site, we were looking at uh, 
this 17 inch pine here that was marked for removal, but I've, uh, uh, I spoke with Mark Bulk and the clients have agreed it's fine to uh, keep that 17 inch pine there that you, you said you'd like to see uh, remain. Um, yeah. And I think that was, that was the only change I had for you. <clears throat> Um, can I answer any, any questions about it? I think uh, Sally had a question last meeting about the square footage of the existing house versus the square footage of the proposed house um, and their, their footprints. Uh, the existing house is a 1,234 square feet footprint and what's proposed is 1,080 square feet. So that's about 150, 155 uh, net decrease. Um, and it's a 245 uh, square foot net decrease of building inside the buffer zone. Um, that doesn't include the, the decks and the, uh, the stone area, stone patio area. How much Where if you the... include them? How much if we include them? Mm -hmm. uh, they add on, um, they add on about 400 square feet. Um, and where are the decks? Let me zoom in here for you. So there's a, a deck here, which is uh, up on, on piers. This is a second story deck and there's gonna, their patio is located below. Um, and then there's <clears throat> a, a deck, our screen porch above right here um, with gravel below and they're planning to store boats, things like that there. Um, and then there's this retaining wall here, which helps contain the stone stone terrace here, some steps, and then the stone terrace underneath these decks. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's a slight increase. Uh, if you count all of that stuff, uh, we, I wouldn't uh, consider those exactly impervious surface, but they are, you know, structure. Um, if so, if you include that, that's about a 400 square foot increase. So, but the but our issue is that once you build those decks, they are a buy right for being incorporated into the house. Uh, yes, yeah. And um, those and those decks have roofs on them. Um, only only this portion here is a is a covered screen porch. Um, this deck here does not have a roof, um, and. Uh, neither of the stone terraces do. But that's still, so is any of it closer to the lake than what's there? Um, nope, it is, let me look here. So that's about nine feet for the house itself is about nine feet further back from the lake. Um, which is 76 feet right here. Um, the deck, the closest point of the deck is about 74 feet from the lake. Um, and the closest point of the existing house here, you can see is 67 feet. So it gets a little bit further back from the lake, but pretty much the, the same area. It's, it's turned a little bit, is that yeah. correct? Jackson. Yeah, the existing house is at kind of an angle from uh, the road and the lake uh, and the, the parcel lines. Um, this one is, is more square with the property lines and, and the lake. Okay. Um, and me and Ron went over this uh, at the site visit, but I we're proposing uh, multiple shrub plantings along the shoreline uh, to fill in those gaps that are there. And the one that's left from the, the previous dock, those will be filled in with native vegetation. Uh, and we're proposing uh, multiple white pines um, to replace some of the white pines coming down on the east side of the house, um, as well as more tree and shrub plantings along the western property line and then as well as some more tree, tree and shrub plantings in this uh, kind of island inside the gravel driveway. All right, just, just for the information of the other members, Jackson, show the left side where the big pine trees are now that have to come down. Yep, that would be these three are gonna be removed. Yeah. Um, and then these two over here, 
these two pines. Um, I believe they're proposing to uh, trim part of this 30 inch pine. Yeah. A, a large branch leaning over. Um, and then I believe the rest are proposed to stay. So it's as shown with the proposed house now, it's, it's these three pines here that are gonna be removed. Uh, this pine real close to the front corner, one here, one here, uh, and then these three pines there. This is the one that's gonna be trimmed. Um, and we're proposing to replace, I believe one to one with all of those. So there are nine being removed, is that right? Did I add right? One, two, three. That's what I counted. And you'll replant nine? So we're taking nine mature trees out and getting nine saplings. Is that right? Yeah, I counted ten actually, just to okay. try to be fair here. I think there's Maybe these I two here. One. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and that one there, this ash tree, which we were looking at at the, the site visit. Yeah. Um, so that's Jackson, <laughs> it's my suggestion that that ash tree goes now while you're doing work there. Yeah, I, I guess I must have misspoke at the site visit. It looks like it's got an X through it. It's marked to be to be removed anyway. So then we'll, we'll go through with that. Um, and then they were proposing six trees on this side uh, and three trees on this side. So that's nine. So we could we could propose one more tree to to hit that one to one ratio for replacement if you'd like. Jason, yes. it's been my suggestion that if you, the closer you get to the water and you take trees down, the more trees you replace. Mm -hmm. um, I like two to one, but I was at that site and I don't know how that would work. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how we'd squeeze all those in there. The trees that are there now for the members to understand are, are single stem, long, tall, white pines with hardly any branches on them. They've been there a long time. Some of them are gonna be in the way of the driveway. Some of them are gonna be in the way of the, the building itself. Um, <clears throat> if they do the building in the driveway, they can't stay. Best shot we have is to replace with similar or like native species or other native trees. Um, and hopefully they, they survive, which we want them to. And uh, yeah, and it'll fill in. Do we want a three year survival rate? That'd be nice. Usually the landscapers will give you a one year, but if you ask for a three year, well, that's theoretically the length of the notice of intent. Yeah, that sounds agreeable. <clears throat> if they do a good job, that shouldn't even be an issue. Yeah, I would imagine they'll be getting some some good sunlight on the, the new plantings once a lot of these older trees are removed. So we're taking out 10 mature trees so that we can rotate the building, what, 30 degrees or whatever it is. That's the basic bottom line. Essentially, yeah, and and the addition of this uh, this parking area. Um, so, can I ask the obvious question? Why not just stick with the current rotation and not lose so many trees? Uh, I I believe the clients, you know, wanted the the house to to face the lake. I'm not exactly sure why the existing house was built the way it was, um, and uh, they uh, proposed this to better fit the. Uh, uh, zoning setbacks uh, and zoning requirements. Uh, they did have to go through a uh, special permit through with the, uh, or are going through, uh, I think it's on February 16th is the hearing, uh, a special permit application for the LPOD district. So I believe uh, that was the main reasoning for rotating the house to try to better meet those, those setbacks. It's gonna be a special yeah. permit either way. Yes, yep, they are. We're on the, the agenda for the February 16th planning board meeting. Okay, well, 
So can we get a uh, can we get a letter updating the tree situation? Yes, for sure. Please. It can be an email. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I can I can list the trees to be removed and anything that goes into town hall is problematic at this point. Understood. <clears throat> Anyone has any questions? The trees are still marked. If you want to do a drive by on your own time, okay. Uh, but but if you look at this drawing right now, you'll see the road is on the bottom of your screen. You can see the the U shaped driveway. The opening on the left side of the screen is where the start is. I don't know exactly where the right comes out probably how, probably how steep is that ron do we have another one of those weird driveways and jackson i don't know how far down the hill that goes so i don't know if i can answer that it's, yeah, it, it, it does it does drop some but it's it, not as bad it as drops about four feet. feet yeah right. it's about four feet to the it's, uh, it's it's got a side slope to it um if it was plowed, I think it would be easier to park your your, your car there, but I, I don't know if it is at the moment. Um, so it might be a little little tough for, for most vehicles. Can you go to the, can you shift the map to the right just for a moment? Thanks. And not, not so, yeah, that, that's great. Um, Okay. See where the boundary line is, Patrick, on the left? Yep. And then it goes down and the, that little path that's on the, yeah, that path is, from Jackson described it as, as a wooded grassed pathway that's just kind of let, been let o overgrow. Yeah, I believe I, it. I can't tell now it's under the snow. <laughs> And the only other really thing different other than the U-turn is where the little pull off there is. And that's, that's so there's a place to park your car. That might be a little bit lower. Is that going to be filled and, and. Uh, I don't believe there's uh, any fill proposed there, no. Because you're within the LPOD there. So that's all stuff that planning board's going to be looking at. Yep. Yeah, I believe the only uh, fill that's involved is around the front of the house. Um, but I don't, I don't, it's, it's not a, a significant amount of fill. It's, it's more site grading. Um, but that'll be built around these stone terraces and stuff. Um, I don't think there's any any grading proposed for the driveway. Jackson, what sort of waterfront work is going to be done to install the dock? Uh, so this one is a relatively easy one. It's got this, it's kind of difficult to see on this site plan here, uh, but there's this large flat stone, probably four feet by three feet wide. Um, and that's proposed to be the anchor location uh, of the dock. So that'll sit on top and be anchored on the sides with posts likely. Um, and then I believe they're proposing uh, feet, uh, aluminum feet for the rest of the dock. Um, so it'll, it'll be minimal alteration because it's gonna be sitting right on top of a, an existing stone there. Minimal is a little sketchy from what we've dealt with before. Um, no fill. Yeah, I, there shouldn't be any fill involved. Um, I, I think they will. They just anchor it at the shoreline with a post at each corner and let that sit right on top of that large rock, um, and just try to keep it level as it goes out over the water with uh, with feet. 
Okay, at this point, given what we've been dealing with lately, we have to make we have to make sure that the contractor knows all this stuff because we've been getting some really unpleasant surprises when when things are on the ground. Understood. Yep. Jackson, so, stay on stay on top of this, Jackson. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> We used to have uh, a provision in the order, orders of conditions that the contractor would have to sign off that he had read every single page of the order of conditions and he had looked at all the plans. Yeah, I, I don't see why that would be an issue for this. I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I don't, I don't know if all contractors take the time to to read through orders of conditions or look at the the site plans we propose closely, but it would be be good to require them to. <laughs> All right. Anyone have any more questions, comments? Uh, I, have, I have just one question. Uh, Joe, how far is it to the opposite bank, Jackson? Uh, this bank here. The the one that would be opposite the dock. Um. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Across the channel? Across the channel. I'm not exactly sure. I think that was something we came to uh, back in 2019 when this was uh, owned by the, the Keon and Kennelly's. Um, I think the measurements I took were around 105 feet from shoreline to shoreline. So I guess uh, that's a, a rough estimate. Um, again, that was just, that's just from my memory of 2019. Um, It'd I'd have to be 125 to to keep an open channel. Yep. Um, yes, yeah, with the length of the dock plus that. Um, so I, I I'd have to I'd have to go back and take some. I think I did it with a laser measurement last in 2019. So to get to get you a, a solid number, I think I'd have to go back and check. Yeah, I think we need that solid number. Gotcha. Ron, I had a question. Was this the property that the man was very, um, he wanted to move the rock away from his dock? He kept asking about moving rocks out of the way. No. Oh, okay. No, the, no one's... There was a path proposed at one time that came sweeping in from the north, but that's gone away and Okay. Entirely different proposal. Well, not entirely different, but different proposal by different people for a different scheme. Similar though. <laughs> but similar. All right. So do we want to continue until we know the channel measurement? Yes. And I would like to, um, am I there? I would like yeah. to um, present this as being a very typical type of project that could use a three phased um, approach to it, meaning that, you know, phase one, the demolition of the old house, we go and we take a look. Phase two, um, we go and take a look at the grading when they're getting set up to do the house. And phase three, once the house is completed, um, how they're complying with the plan that they put before us uh, with regard to plantings, et cetera. Um, this is gonna sure. be a this is gonna be a can that I'm banging on for a long time, this three phase project but it's a result of what we missed down at Mackinac Shores. John, we couldn't get anybody to go on the site visit, but myself. Ron, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about putting into effect a three-phase program where the contractor or the builder or the homeowner um, says, okay, this part of the project will be done on XYZ day, meaning the demolition of the house. We go, I go, frankly, take a look 
and see if we have 12 boulders in the lake out of the clear blue sky. Um, phase two is they build the house and we look at the grading that's proposed on this plan and the grading that they have actually done. And phase three is when the house has been built and they're preparing to do the plantings of what it is that they have removed and they propose that they're gonna be putting in, we go and we talk to them once again. I, you know, I'm sorry to complicate matters here, but we're getting bamboozled left and right with certain projects. And I'm not particularly appreciative of being bamboozled by people who you know, don't communicate to the contractor how the project is to proceed forward. If this is gonna yank them in, this is gonna yank them in. That, that's the only reason I'm putting this forward. I'm certainly not opposed to it, but I don't know what kind of restrictions we can put on, on the contractors in that way. I don't know how, unless, and here's, here's a thought. When they're through with the excavation and the demolition, they call us. Let us know what happened. Give us a week or so to go see it. Then the next step comes on. They call us again. But How about they email us because calling is not going to be very um, well, efficient. Email is fine. I'm okay with that. Then the, however we set up the second phase and then the third phase would be a certificate of compliance for the finished product. Right. That's all I'm asking. Sounds good. I have, I have no problems. So Jackson, when you're rewriting the letter um, about how, uh, the, how the trees are gonna be, what trees are coming out and what's what what the changes are from this mm -hmm. plan can you um, make a proposal that you think is reasonable um, in terms of the progress of how this is going to go and you can you stage it like three stages at which point we will come and inspect mm -hmm. okay yeah i can i can put together like a a uh, estimated construction sequence at which we're supposed to notify you at uh, very, you know, those three separate stages. So you can inspect the erosion controls and all that uh, before work actually begins and on each phase. Yay. Okay, that would be good. Thank you, Jackson. No problem, thank you. So we're continuing this, right? Yes. Up next. I have no idea how to say that name. Yeah, Threeb. Yeah, Threeb. Yeah, I think Sally's got it. Hey, Ron, nice. can you ask a question? I had my hand up. Oh, uh, you have your hand up. I don't see any picture of you, though, Kate. But what would you like? You see my name. <laughs> I see your name, but I don't see your hand. Okay, so um, my question is, I was glad that Joe asked about the channel width. Because, Jackson, are you still here? Good. I am. Uh, Ellie mentioned the, this has been something I've been thinking about as we get um, these requests on the channels, on the channel with docs and so on. Um, at what point is passageway blocked? And Sally, you mentioned 125 feet. Is that right? Yeah, I, I know that there are some navigable waterways of the Commonwealth or of the, of the I don't know. Anyway, I think it's a federal thing, but it, they have to be navigable um, under certain circumstances. And I've never been able to find those figures or that um, or that regulation, but I'm pretty darn sure that there is one. Yeah, okay. I, I've what seen them, are? Sally. I can't remember what they are. Excuse me, Kate. That's all right. Um, I'll have to see if I could find them. It might be. I, I thought it was 125 feet. It might be chapter 91, and um, I can I can check it. I'll I'll look. I'm curious, so I'll look into it. 
you know, and that's again, that's something that I think that the planning board should look at too. Um, because I don't know that it's jurisdictional as far as we're concerned, unless there's some federal regulation. But it seems to me that we are, we have such a proliferation of building around the lake that particularly in the outlet, if, if the people across the way decided to put a dock out a uh, hundred or, you know, however, 25 feet, and then those people on the other side put out dock out 25 feet. You've just taken 50 feet out of the channel. Right, that's why I asked. So I'll, I'll look into it. And um, I know when we have docks, you know, other than that 25 feet out and the um, limit of 200 square feet, that's, um, you know, that's what's on the, the bylaw books. But um, certainly, we can check with the state to find out if there is passageway and it would be good to know that. Jackson, do you happen to know? I believe when I looked into it in, uh, in 2000, the end of 2019, uh, I wasn't able to find any regu uh, regulation in chapter 91 about uh, channel width um, and docks affecting that. Um, I, yeah, as I was not able to find a, uh, uh, just a number that we could land upon. Um, I just remember uh, measuring the the width of j the channel and we were getting about I think 105 feet um, but as far as regulation goes I I don't have any uh, any number I could give you at the moment okay so Sally Ron that might be something that we could look into to doing maybe uh, yes pass passageway so, and file that we could get on the books so right. I just looked up the um chapter 19th on the MassGov website and there is um, a phone number. So I think there's probably someone who could help. There is indeed. Thank you, yeah. Jamie. You're welcome. David Cameron does uh, all, a lot of the uh, chapter 91 licenses for this part of the state. So he would, he would uh, likely have some kind of answer for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey. He may hear Stockbridge and run away. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> Kate, it might be better if you called. <laughs> no, I've been in touch with him, so I'm happy to call him. <laughs> you They're not his favorite us. people. I don't think he minds. I think he's, you know. <laughs> We're just kidding. Yeah, but yeah. But they're busy, sort of. you know, but I think he likes us. <laughs> we speak well of him. Yep. We don't call him a petty bureaucrat. <laughs> now oh. let me guess, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I can imagine where that came from. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we get into anything else. I think the term was low level, by the way. Oh, not petty. sorry. Low level yeah. bureaucrat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Notice of intent Michael Lando. 50 Lake Drive, single home demolition, another tear down, replacement and septic, foresight. Yep, I am, I'm here to speak to that as well. Um, oh, geez. Let me pull up the site plan for us here. Did we miss Yathrib? I'm, I'm also here for that one as well. So whatever order you want to do them in. <laughs> Yeah, right. so let's do right. that first. We started skipping over. I'm sorry. All right. Um, so I believe uh, at the end of the last meeting, uh, you had asked me to come back with uh, a site plan that kind of better highlighted what was done under the current order of conditions um, and uh, what wasn't done. Um, so I, this is the uh, originally permitted plan, or sorry, no, this is our proposed plan from uh, uh, 2020, current plan. Um, and I've highlighted this, this uh, pipe here, this drain line, which is connects to this existing tow drain here, which is what was proposed um, under the current order of conditions. Um, and that drain line was just installed through, right through here this area of BBW that I've highlighted in pink, 
was filled in and this pipe was installed through it. And now it discharges from a uh, perched outlet right here. Um, and so that was not what was proposed. Uh, what was proposed is basically what we've shown here uh, on our proposed site plan was connecting drain line to this existing catch basin, the tow drain. They would both meet here uh, at this yard drain, which is we're proposing, which is not currently installed. Um, and they would both then outlet to this uh, recharge swale, which would bleed through uh, a crushed stone bedding like this uh, into the proposed uh, wetland mitigation area, which was never uh, created. Um, so essentially, the only thing that was done was installing this 12 inch pipe to the from the tow drain to right here and letting it outlet. Um, and, the, and also filling in the BBW right here. Um, and none of the mitigation work was done. Um, so we essentially just want to close out the existing order of conditions because it's long expired. Um, and we're proposing this new plan, as you can see here, um, which will uh, restore uh, 1,200 square feet of BBW. So that'll be a little uh, 150 foot increase from what was filled in. Um, we'll remove this section of pipe right here. Um, and then we'll install this yard drain and install this section of drain line, as well as this recharge swale here, uh, which will be constructed a little something like this. Um, the storm drainage will outlet into this uh, recharge swale um, and from there, the water will be allowed to bleed through the crushed stone bedding of the swale into the proposed wetland replication area and provide that area good hydrology. Um, so yeah, is there, is there any questions I can answer about it? Yeah, there was supposed to be uh, a replication. Yes. And that's where? Um, it's right here. So... Uh, this is the same area, we're proposing it in the same area they did in 2000. Um, but that didn't happen, right? Yeah, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This is what we're proposing under the notice of intent that we submitted. Um, yeah, let's let's deal with uh, the certificate of compliance and we'll deal with what we're gonna do that's new. Yep, let me pull that up for that's you. Not, that's not on this agenda. Gotcha. I mean, I we, can, can. we can look at it, but um what we're looking at at the moment is the certificate of compliance mm -hmm. yeah i just wanted to give you a better idea of what was done um let me this was in two year 2000 yes this was in march of 2000 um so i'm pulling up the site plan that was approved under this order of conditions um let me share that with you all here Okay, so this is what was originally proposed and approved in 2000. Um, as you can see, that same recharge swale detail is here. Um, so the BBW in, is, uh, comes out from the woods like this, and it had kind of eroded away this area. So they had proposed to fill in this area of BBW and replicate that right here uh, with this recharge swale. Um, but they didn't do it and none of that was done. The only thing that was done was this, like I said, this uh, connection to this tow drain, um, which tr comes down this drain line and goes, there's no yard drain here that was never put in. It goes right past that and outlets over here, uh, kind of in the center of the BBW. Um, I have a question, Jackson. And sure. I, it's something that we need to consider as the Conservation Commission. This, this proposal, what came before us, was a fairly significant um, disturbance of, of wetlands and BBWs and all that stuff. And part of, the, part of the requirement for being allowed to do any work at all was to create a... Uh, a replication area, which they didn't do, which is yep. naughty. Yes, I, I agree. They, the contractor so, 
did not. You know, what the heck? So whose responsibility is this? I mean, if, if I'm not going to, I'm not trying to dump this all on you, but if, if you guys are the engineers, this is just, was, um, it's not like whoever it is has gone out of business. Mm -hmm. It was drawn by Mark Volk. Yep. Um, you know, how much follow up do you do when you, when you make one of these plans and you give it to the contractor? Just curious. It depends on the job, really. Um, for a, relatively simple drainage job like this i think we would uh give it to the contractor and make sure they're aware of the proposed plan well um, apparently they weren't because they didn't do it apparently not apparently they gave up halfway through and and quit the job according to the to the owners um so typically we would just follow up uh later on uh maybe once twice depending on the, the length duration of the project uh, and then follow up again once it's uh, completed. Um, but you said that the you say that the owners, according to the owners, that halfway through they quit the job. The owners didn't see a, a and a, a duty to complete the job with a different vendor. I mean, this is what was permitted. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I can't say you know. Uh, how they dealt with the situation back in in 2000 i don't i don't know exactly know what happened and, and and this is the same owner that is now proposing this work it's <laughs> it's owned by the same uh company right. uh, this i just think if they company. basically abandoned the work halfway through 20 years ago we're going to want some assurances that this work gets completed as described this time once bitten twice shy as they say understood yep we've been getting bitten a lot lately and we're getting a little cranky about it i'm running out of fingers <laughs> and this returns exactly this returns to exactly to what i was saying earlier about the previous project i know John. If, if we if we set this in some kind of stone that we are going to have three phases that we're going to come and look at you know this type of scenario probably wouldn't happen 20 years later all of a sudden we become aware of it mm -hmm. jackson what is the what is the motivation of of opening this 20 years later is there new work that's being proposed that they need to come before this commission to complete they are uh, i believe the owners are trying to they are in the process of selling the property um and they're in reviewing their deed um, they okay. found an order of conditions from expired from 20 years ago. Um, and they hired us to, to investigate and, um, you know, and so it takes the survey to get a compliance to clear the deed deed. Is that right? Yes. Essentially right, so, want to clear the of course deed. it says, let, let's keep in mind that it says in the order of conditions that they are supposed to apply for the certificate of compliance upon completion of the work. Yeah. But, but bottom line is that this D doesn't get transferred until we issue a certificate of compliance. I mean, the, the new owners could just purchase it with the order of conditions. That's completely up to them. But I think that's uh, currently- Except there's no work that can be done under this order of conditions. Exactly. So we want to propose to uh, close out this order of conditions and the new and NOI the submitted will- uh, try to okay. mitigate yeah, all of this work. No, this is a little. This is a little different than some of the other projects that we've been getting, you know, back from the '90s and stuff. Mm -hmm. In that the the work that was supposed to be done included a replication. Yes. Um, and the replication is, you know, a serious a serious part of the wetlands protection. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is actually a violation. Yeah, of the order of conditions. It, it's this no is doubt. not just a we decided not to finish it. This is a violation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no 20 doubt. 20 years. It's, it's no doubt that the, the owners and the uh, contractor definitely dropped the ball on, on this one. Um, and all basically the drainage, some of the drainage work was done and they completely ignored the, the mitigation at the time. Okay, so they understand, let me just say that they understand that we could fine them $100 a day retroactive. 
I don't know if they they know that, but <laughs> I could I could think of aware of it. Is this that seven million dollar property on Ice Glen Road that we're talking about? Yes. That's what we're talking about, and we could put the kibosh on it. Yeah, you know, I I I mean, look, I'm not sure that we want twenty years of a hundred dollar day fines, but I think that there should be consequences to basically not replicating the BVW. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you know what we're proposing and under the NOI is to uh, correct the work um, and try to uh, mitigate what was proposed back then and match those conditions. But if you feel that something more needs to be done, you want to replicate more area um, and do something more for the wetlands. I'm, I'm I think they that. need to. I think if it's the same owners and it's you know it was it happened on their watch, I think that that something needs to be proposed that would make us happier than we are at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that, but I think we'll need a little more guidance on what you're looking for uh, other than, you know, all, all I can really say is more wetland replication. We're proposing an increase of about 150 square feet, but you know, that's kind of, well, that's I mean, I think square feet. So if, if you want something more, we're happy to try to, you know, please the commission and help move this along uh, smoothly so we can replicate the wetland and, you know, uh, try to. Yeah, yeah I mean, damage Jackson, up. I think, uh, yeah, I think to Sally's point, $100 a day fine over 20 years is about $750,000, mm -hmm. something like that. So, yeah. you know, um, and I think that that is excessive, but nevertheless, I think that there should be consequences, especially property owners as sophisticated as this one with such a large important parcel that is so valuable who literally just simply was probably being penny wise and sort of just you know pinching pennies to to cut out several tens of thousands of dollars worth of work 20 years ago and now that you know now the property's increased in value by what fivefold i think there should be consequences to ignoring the work till the day you want to sell I would propose that we find them five thousand dollars. I think we should think about it and continue before we get to the fine. Right. All right. Can I, let's, can think I ask? About it. let's think about it seriously, okay? Can I ask one question is what was the goal of this project? The goal well, uh, what, uh, of this what project were they trying to in, accomplish. Yeah, back in two thousand, you can see proposed lawn reclamation. Um, so this area uh this dotted area had all eroded out from this uh tow drain i believe um and kind of flowed into this bbw so it was permitted under lawn reclamation um and they filled this area of bbw and we're supposed to replicate it right here uh, with some additional drainage work so they basically got what they wanted they filled in their lawn so that it looked pretty but they they said you know screw you on the rest of it right Right. I can, can, can I ask a question of Jackson? I you said that the outlet was perched as it, it currently now, exists. Yeah, it's perched, right? And it's oh. a ten-inch pipe. Uh, ten or twelve-inch. Uh, That's yeah. carrying a lot of water, doesn't it? Erode when it, when it comes out of there. It appears like they put some crushed stone at the bottom or something like that. So there hasn't been too much erosion, but it's. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell exactly. Um, so, yeah, we we just want to uh, try to try to rectify what was done um, with the new proposed notice of intent, but obviously we can't move forward with that till we sort out the certificate of compliance. Uh, and I just want to add, um, it feels that we don't need to take responsibility for someone that's out of compliance. Like, why do we have to come up with a plan for, it's 20 years old, like. Yeah. Not up to us, that's up to Not them to come up that. with something to make us happy. No, exactly, it's my point. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -mm. Jackson, I think you get the idea we're not happy. Yeah, I, I can understand that. <laughs> um, so yeah, here's just our, I figured I'd show it to you before we move on our proposed site plan, um, proposing replication in the same area, um, installation of the recharge swale, 
and this yard drain and removing that section of perched outlet. Um, but if we, uh, if this, you know, this 1200 square feet of replication area is not enough to. How big is the property, Jackson? Um, let me check. There's multiple lots. Um, Has it been merged? Um, I don't, I believe it's just uh, one parcel. There's an uh, adjoining parcel, uh, five ice glen to the uh, south. Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to look at the property record card. I don't know how many acres um, the property is. So I'll have to get back to you on that one. Well, so I think I think that they need to be reminded that they could have been fined a hundred dollars a day retroactively, and uh, that they really ought to start thinking about what really swell thing that they could do to make the conservation commission happy. So look at I don't, I don't do think we that. should rule out a fine, Sally. No, I'm not saying that we should rule out a fine, but what I'm saying is that they could be hit with a really big fine. Or yeah, a, and or they could come up with some something that would um, enhance the property in terms of its ecological value, and not just have a big, have a big, big yeah. lawn and a big house. But look at you know, and and you have a you have a property that my guess I have no idea if Jackson might know that probably was valued twenty years ago at a million to two million dollars. They enjoyed the benefits of that property for 20 years. They didn't do the work. And now they're going to cash out and make five to seven million in profit, whatever the number is. I, I think there should be consequences to this kind of disregard for what people agree to do. So right. I, did, gotcha. I did the math. It's $730,000 if we applied that fine. Yeah, that's what I said. Exactly. And actually, we could do it twice because we can do it under the town bylaw. <laughs> and the wetlands bylaw. So it could be double that. <clears throat> I'm just saying. I'll buy it for that much. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to relay that message. Mm -hmm. Jackson, you're gonna come, come back with another plan that's gonna make us real happy. Understood, yep. <laughs> Thanks, Jackson. Just as an aside, Jackson, there's a lot of invasives in ice in uh, ice glen that borders this property. Hey, hey Jackson, uh -huh. I'm not really I, I didn't really hear what what Patrick just said, but when you come back with your plan that you have in front of us here, um, there is truth be told, number three and number five are really one property, um, and number five also has some wetland issues at the southeast end of it. Um, and whoever's gonna buy that property and turn it into a monument for money um, really needs to kind of present the whole damn picture to us because this is only one part of it. Um, and this is a part of it that's old, goes back to 2000. We're gonna have new owners in here pretty soon. It'd be nice to see the whole property and what it is that's in front of us. I, I could I could try to produce uh, you know uh, some locust maps or something like that, but I you know Five Ice Glen's owned by somebody uh, somebody different. Um, no, that's so just really... a, that's just a you know it's a real estate. The beneficial owner is different, or the actual owner is different. You know, it's a real estate trust. Uh, for Five Ice Glen, I believe the actual owner is different. Uh, I, I spoke to him a while back. He was kind of interested in the project. Um, He's not going to be interested in it if it has a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine on it. <laughs> I would imagine not. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue this, Jackson. We're not going to rule anything out. Yep, understood. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Nope. Now we're continued. Yes. Don't go away. Now we're doing 50 Lake Drive. Yep. OK. 
Okay, I, I can uh, pull that site plan up for you now. Well, they Thank threw you. you in the deep end, didn't they, Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they knew uh, nobody was going to be happy about that project. So, <laughs> tell Mark I think he's a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> um, okay. You don't have to tell me what he says. <laughs> What do we have here? This one, I don't believe you have seen yet. Uh, 50 Lake Drive, uh, that's map 101, lot two, um, owned by Michael and Marilyn Landau. Um, they're proposing house replacement, septic system, um, uh, septic system replacement. Uh, it's a buffer zone only project. Um, we were careful to design all of the work uh, outside of 50 feet uh, uh, from the lake. So here's that 50 foot buffer line and we made sure to keep all the proposed work on the opposite side of that. Uh, the existing house, a little tough to see here. Um, there's this dashed gray outline here with an existing deck attached to the front. Uh, that's about 979 uh, square feet footprint. Uh, all of it's in the buffer zone. Uh, it's approximately 56 feet from the mean annual high water mark. Um, this existing area here is lawn in front of the house with uh, some wooded areas on the northern and southern property lines. Uh, there's some existing shrubs along the uh, shoreline as well. Um, the exi existing septic system uh, is located underground, basically in the same location uh, as the proposed septic system, um, both of which are outside the 100 foot buffer zone. <clears throat> Jackson, is, is that a mound? Um, as proposed, uh, yes, it's going to be kind of mounded up, but uh, there's going to be these retaining walls here. Also a little tough to see, but... <laughs> There's going to be a retaining wall proposed along here, and that'll be about uh, three feet tall at its highest point. Um, and that'll kind of connect to this ledge over here. And then there'll be another retaining wall proposed around the front. These are all stone dry laid retaining walls, I should say. Um, and that'll connect to the house here. Um, um, so uh, they'll install erosion controls first, obviously. Um, that's in the form of silt fence and straw bales. That's this dark dashed line all along the, the project there. Uh, the proposed house is gonna be two stories. That's this dotted area here you can see. Uh, it's approximately 62 feet from the man mean annual high water mark. So it's getting about six feet further back than the existing. Um, it's about 2,000 square foot footprint, so that's uh, 1,820 square feet in the buffer zone. Um, as I mentioned before, there's these proposed dry laid stone retaining walls around the house uh, and the proposed septic system. Um, it's 2,000 square, square foot footprint or the house size is 2,000 square feet? The footprint is uh, 2,000 square feet. And the current footprint, as you said, is 1,000? Uh, just under a thousand. Yep. And how big is the lot? The lot is it's a zero point four acre lot. So what's that like? Ten or twelve thousand? Uh, let me check for you. Patrick, I think it's about one hundred and thirty feet from the road to the lake something like that so 0 0.4 acres would be about uh 17,500 uh 17,424 square feet and so 17 so basically they're coming up against the 15 percent limit and the 15 percent limit doesn't apply to the septic system it's just it's just um, the lot coverage yeah, I believe it's coverage by structure is what they call it. So uh, the septic system being underground, they don't consider that uh, structure, I guess. Is um, that true, Sally and Ron? I don't know. I, I think can't we tell you. know the answer to that. We're, we're <laughs> applying for a LPOD special permit as well for this one. All those zoning uh, requirements are listed here on the, the side and, of the site plan. And Jackson, does the 2,000 square feet include the decks? 
Um, let me check for you. Yes, yep. That includes uh, the only deck proposed uh, is this little area here, uh, essentially. Um, and then this will all be kind of a lawn terrace area. Hey Jackson, right. with your with your cursor there, could you go around and um, outline the actual house? I mean, I'm getting confused by dot, dotted lines here. Uh, yeah, I apologize. It's a little tough to see on the screen. Um, so that's this dark line here, and kind of this odd shape uh, with these steps right here. That's part. That's the only deck portion, and that comes around here. Um, and there'll be right. steps along the front. Um, uh, Jackson, does this does this have a cellar under it? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I'd have to get back to you with that. The the reason I ask is, mm -hmm. if you walked around what I would call the front of the house, which is the lakeside, yep, I'll bet you money. That that ground is squishy. Yeah, I don't. I don't imagine they'd be putting in a, a full basement. Um, maybe like a small crawl space, or it'd be on a slab. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'd have to. I'll have to get back to you with the. And and the proposed right where your cursor is now that stone dry laid stone barrier whatever it is. Yep. Is that going to be backfilled? Yeah, that'll be backfilled. So, so you're raising the whole elevation in there. How much? Um, so that'll be about three feet uh, higher than existing grade right here. So everything inside that uh, wall, let's call it a wall, will be three feet higher than it is now. On that on piece? this side, yes, um, and then. On this side, it'll be approximately three feet. Yeah, three feet higher over here. So essentially three feet higher across the whole thing. That's basically to keep it out of the water. And that is, and yet it's not considered coverage for the, the ratio of, of, you know, um, of, you know, the 15% limit. Um, not as far as far as I know, they uh, that's only in consideration to structure. Um, so all of this remaining lawn doesn't increase that as far as I know. Um, but I guess but we'll it's a, it in effect a structure. It's the three feet above where it was before. There's a structure underneath that, isn't there? It's called a septic system. <laughs> uh, the septic system is located over in this area. Uh, and that'll be removed and replaced the existing set or the proposed septic system. Um, we'll go back in the same place, <clears throat> same location. Uh, roughly the same. I'm trying to. Uh, How can it go back in the same location? Isn't it? I mean, by virtue of the fact that it has to be replaced, doesn't that mean that it's been kind of used up? Um, we have a try down permit? Not as of yet. No, they're still applying for a septic permit. So all that's kind of in the works. So you've got a lot of you've got a lot of work to do before you've got your final plan. You've got to get the try town permit. You've got to get the LPOD permit. Mm -hmm. This is the plan that was submitted for the LPOD permit. So any comments they have, I guess we'll be will reflect on this plan and can get that back to you. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm not suggesting that it's a different plan. I'm just saying that there's a lot of work to be done for everybody to get a permit. Yeah, I suggest we continue this and not. Yeah, I'm getting late. <laughs> just well, one more question. Here, here's my take on the whole thing. Sally, we were down. Oh, what's that street off of the crossroads there? The one that goes right, right down to the lake where they filled in. Mosquito heaven. Yes. You know where we're talking. This is this is a, a fill. This this whole area needs to be filled so they can build this house. Do we have existing contours anywhere, Jackson? 
And this yeah, they're pretty tough to see with all the line I'm work on I'm here. I'm trying to them. find them. I can't see them. There's 87 as an existing contour coming across the, the front lawn. Okay. Uh, okay. There's an 88. 88 right here. 89 uh, located kind of underneath this wall. Um, and the top of the wall is going to be at 91. So that's a four foot increase there. I'm assuming we got four feet. <laughs> can you outline the current house, Jackson? The elevation is 94 at the bottom of the steps. Bottom right here? Yep. Yeah, that looks like that's going to be at 94.5. And what, what did you say the bottom of the existing one underneath that uh, wall? The bottom of the wall is proposed 89. to be 89. Um, 88. Right here, right here is 89, kind of existing. Uh, so that's under. six feet. Well, five, you know, five and a half. So I don't know. It says 88. So they're dumping five feet of fill in there to build this house. Yeah. Wow. Well, and Jackson, keep in mind that we have the town wetland bylaw also that mm -hmm. gives us additional jurisdiction. Yep. So buffer zone only isn't necessarily applicable here. This is, uh, this one's not, well, yeah, I guess this is buffer zone only apart from the replacement of, uh, this dock here um, but that's going to be going in the exact same location as the current dock so the, the, the top of the lake is set and showing at 89 the high water mark the high water mark right here uh, is showing about 85 84 it looks like over here 85 right there so right around 84 uh, 84 foot elevation so why are they increasing the the uh, elevation with the fill they're only up five feet patrick yeah. it looks like to propose a, a basement floor um and it looks like it needed to be raised for the the septic system um, so i guess i'll have to come back to you with some answers on how much fill is proposed. Um, I mean, I would suggest that we do a site visit, but I have a feeling we're not going to see very much that's useful. I I think we should let on. Jackson come back in two weeks. So I make a motion we continue this. I favor that motion. Jackson, you got to come up with some more details. Understood. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to. I'll come back with some uh, some information about how much fill uh, it's going to be going in. Um, some more info on the elevations uh, in the existing septic system where that's located. And a tri town permit would be good. Gotcha. All right. Well, I have some work to do over the next two weeks. <laughs> I'll uh, overtime, I'll Jackson. Yeah, I'm trying to keep you off the streets at night, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll keep me busy for sure. All right, Can, we'll continue this. Thank you all for your time tonight. Okay. Thanks, Jackson. Good, Good night, night, Jackson. Uh, I'm, see, not sure, I'm not sure who's here for um, the Shirley's. I don't see anybody from Kelly Granger and Parsons. David Potter, are you here for that? Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter. Uh, no, I'm not here for that. Sorry. I okay. Found you, but... All right. Thank you. So I guess we should get in touch with Kelly Granger and Parsons and have them come in, have them present. Subsurface disposal system. A new septic. 
it's a new septic. Um, so I don't see Sam Mercier on the list. So do we want to, we needed additional information, which we got, yeah. but he's not here to present it. Um, did we feel good about what we got? Well, we Maybe saw we what we needed to see. We know what he's up to. Though a final drawing would have been nice because when uh, we some... talked to him, they were going to drop and pull the fence back some away from the drainage area. Right. It was right on top of the, the soil, wasn't it? Sally, or yes, the, it was. Or the perennial stream or whatever it was. Do we have an email address? Can I ask them to send us a final drawing? Yeah. Or a sketch? I think we asked for dimensions is what we asked for. What he had originally drawn was all right, but we just didn't have dimensions on it. Yeah, I'm not sure. He, he um, we got something on the 22nd, which was before the last meeting. Don't I actually don't see anything since then. Um, but let me let me uh, make sure we get the updated information. Wasn't there a spot they were going to step out the back door or something and they were just about in the stream? Is the way he described it? Well, they are. Um, I don't know if you remember that we did a um, we did a deed restriction on the deck when they built that so that it couldn't be built into anything more because we knew I mean it was really right on top of the stream. I think we need a drawing or a sketch or something. The only real issue we had was with the stairs. Right. They wanted to make landings, two landings. And we, I, I asked for a drawing of what he was going to propose or what to, for a proposal, what he was going to do. And then the, the little fenced area, the fence was supposed to move away from the, the drainage swale or stream. Well, the problem with the problem with the um, uh, hang on, I'm just I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find out from him. Okay, wait. I'm going to forward the latest communication from him. Which was on the 27th. So that was the day after the last meeting, but before our um, before our site visit. There's also more work proposed than is listed on this uh, request for determination. Yeah. And I think that I think that part of it, I think that if he does anything other than just repairing the stairs, that that becomes problematic. Just put everything out of drawing so we know where the what right. is, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I thought we were going to get it, but I don't see where we did. This is the one over by where Pensavies used to live? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Patrick, you were there with us. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just, I, yeah. yeah there, I, was, there was a poured cement staircase that. Right. I think that we were talking about just replacing that to stay away, you know, otherwise it becomes an NOI situation. Right, exactly. Right. OK, 
Okay. Well, I think the oh, Mackinac Terrace. We have a. Why can't I get this to open up again? Stupid thing. Um. We got a thing from Mackinac Terrace. Um, we represent the Mackinac Terrace Association. Would like to determine how best to comply with Article 7 of the Town of Stockbridge bylaws. Of course, they have wetland bylaws too. Um, the stairs leading to the common dock maintained by the association is badly need of repair. Of course, that would be R badly, but never mind. It was stalled many years ago. It's become challenging for some of our senior residents, even for younger residents carrying anything to navigate safely. We'd appreciate some clarification of the requirements of the Conservation Commission to, for the repairs we believe are necessary. We anticipate um, the repair will require a uh, replacement of the deteriorating and uneven wooden and cement paver stairs with a safer, more du durable alternative precast concrete steps for replacement of an existing handrail. So we this believe is not a repair. This is a replacement. Yeah, we believe this activity will not substantially change or enlarge the, the stairs, and that it will significantly improve safety. This project will not involve filling or dredging or discharging any content into Stockbridge Bowl. We anticipate that by installing hay bales between where the work will be done in the lake will be the requirement. Thus, besides describing the scope of work proposed, do we need to provide a formal land survey or formal engineering drawing or specifications? I told them we needed an RDA. Yeah. That, that could be a nightmare where they start tearing that apart and they get exactly. Okay. I mean, they, they can't just do it. I think we need to. There we go. Um, I, the, I we need to um, we need to see what they're planning and how they're planning to do it and how the, what kind of equipment they're going to need. And as I recall, that particular um, that particular uh, situation is could potentially be considered to be a waterfall <laughs> but i don't know um so there might be some modifications that we might like to see happen while they're working on it that would um improve the possibility of erosion and other things that we don't want to see so an RDA would, would give us a chance to look at what they're planning. And so that's what I told them they needed to do. And if it looks like it's more complicated than that, then we can always ask for an NOI. All right. Okay. Any other business? Would anyone else like to speak? Uh, Ron, it's Kate. Are you going to be discussing that uh, clear cutting going down at 78 Interlaken? Uh, we did earlier. Oh, yeah, time. Greg came. Okay, what was all right, Patrick? Will you fill me in on that? Sure. He he um, contends that what they're doing is removing invasive species. Okay, well, they're 150 feet is the LPOD, and that includes uh, um, land use. So that really needs to be permitted under the LPOD. By the planning board. All right. Yep. Needs to be permitted by the CONCOM too. Did he know that? He does now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks for the heads up, Kate. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so I don't think that there's anything else right now. I don't John, John, are you good? You're muted, You're muted, John. You know, I, I really believe that not only the CONCOM should go to a three-phased approval process when it comes to the various different projects that we've been bamboozled on and future projects, 
but the planning board's going through all sorts of a song and dance dealing with, you know, the, the development of land in the town of Stockbridge and so forth and so on. And I believe that they should likewise um, adopt a three-phase plan. And I'll give you an example. Example was Patrick Sheehan invited Mary and I, for whatever reason, I don't know, um, over to his project years ago, back when you know he was doing his dog and pony show. And you know, I put it down on the table and he said, what do you think? And I said, you know what, Patrick, <clears throat> here's what I think. You go and you build your hotel and do whatever you're gonna do to the mansion under permit number one. And then after using local contractors and after using local people that you buy materials from, et cetera, you come back to the selectmen and the planning board for phase number two, which is gonna be your condominiums. And then when they give you the approval on that, you do the same thing, you become the hero, you use local contractors, you buy from local um, you know, dresser halls and the like. And then when that's done and you get the approval of that, you go to phase three, which is his cluster housing back at the base of the mountain. I said, you might, you might get it approved. I said, you got a much better chance of getting it approved by doing that than you do by just putting the whole plan on the table. And he flatly said, I can't do it. Um, if it was required in the town of Stockbridge that this is the way we approach things, maybe people like Patrick Sheehan would know ahead of time that this is the way it's done. That's it. I have nothing more to say. I have no problems with that, but the discussion with the uh, other boards we can give suggestions, maybe they can discuss them and let them, they can get back to us with suggestions too. Well, we uh, have two, three members of the planning board on our call tonight. I see that. So they're, let, they're hearing what we're saying. Because they're, they see our reasoning where we're getting tired of finding out 20 years later that things weren't done properly. Yeah, I think we, we need to really look at a conservation agent. We're gonna need, we're gonna need people in town hall who can follow up on this stuff. We're all, I mean, look, this is a volunteer board. Planning is a volunteer board. You know, we, we need to have, uh, the honor system is clearly not working. <laughs> nope. I agree. So, I agree with you, Patrick, and I think it's one of the things, particularly as we looked at 82 Interlaken and the size of that development, and not just in looking at how it could be built out and checking on it, but even looking at the plans and making sure that all of those plans really are what they say they are. And I know other towns have options for just having an engineer on retainer. And that engineer can be available to look at plans and give feedback, particularly on a big project that we feel that we could miss something, as well as being able to look at the construction and make sure that they are doing what John is suggesting at one point or another, checking to make sure this is done properly. And well, I think that this person could be paid for by having a surcharge on the permits or increasing the cost of our permits so that we might not cover all the costs. But I think this town would save money in the long term if they had this kind of person available to help us with 
the complicated permits that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And I know with 82 Interlake, and I have carried that 20 pounds of plants around with me and I look at them <laughs> and then I pull my hair out because I really don't feel comfortable making <laughs> decisions or, or even knowing the questions to ask so that yeah. we can get the information. Christine, so, yeah. we're, Christine, we're in budget season and that starts Thursday at the select board meeting. Let's come, come Thursday and let's like talk a little bit about what the parameters might be around increasing fees and, and funding this stuff. If we don't do it now, it's gonna be another year and three months, a year and a half. So we and either I, start it right now or we're gonna miss another year. And I'm just talking for me. I have no idea how the planning board feels. I have no idea how anyone else feels. So. And I'm just talking I, for me, not on behalf of any other boards I sort of sit on. <laughs> okay. Not, no time like the present is my point. Let's well, do it. If we put the idea out there, then we can have start a discussion. And I, if it goes someplace, it does. And if it doesn't, so be it. But I just, I'm feeling that need right now. Yep, me too. Well, I think we've been overwhelmed by a lot of stuff. And I think that, that one of the things that's happening in this town is we've got more people with more money who, and we're outgunned. We just, you know, and literally the most valuable property in town was in our was it at our committee meeting commission meeting tonight, having literally flouted the law for 20 years, looking to basically finally do the work that grudgingly so that they could sell it. Well, my I mean, point come on, keeping things in the three phases <laughs> is exactly the reason for what you're saying after yeah. 20 years of. You know, that estate sitting there and not being complied with what it set out to do. And That's, a giant fine, John. Yeah. That's my I mean, personal stage opinion. Stage one, stage two, stage three. Okay, you're done. You're good. Go by. See ya. Yep. Okay. If we don't do that, we're, we're going to be back at the table with this again. And I won't be here, but another 20 years. On our agenda tonight, we have. 16 Beechwood Drive. That's been sitting for over a year now. Yeah, more than that, I think. Yeah, we ought to put a, we ought to put a limit on how long these things can just sit, you know. And is this an enforcement action? No, it's just when when they asked for the certificate of compliance, we didn't feel that they'd done the work that. Um, and it was it was relatively minor. It was just letting stuff grow and putting in some new plants. So it's not like a huge violation, but they just didn't do it. Yeah, what they do now, they're mowing down to the water's edge. Yeah. Right. So can we find them? We got to get their attention somehow, guys. This is stupid. Okay. And you know, it's only going to get worse because. You know, now that all the inventory of houses has been bought up and demolitions and replacements, the next thing that's going to go is land. And then they're going to be at, at, at us for, let's do this with the land, let's do that for the land. We got to put some time limit, limits on things. I mean, you know, when 16 Beachwood Drive, I mean, it doesn't say what, what day or whenever it was put before us, but, you know, continued pending resolution of violation. I mean, we can do that forever. But let's not. Until let's they wait. want to sell. And then they'll come back to us and want a certificate of compliance. They'll finally do the work when they have an upside in the purchase and sale. I don't like it that way. I don't like it either. I think that we need to start to think differently. Well, I've said my piece. So All we, right. need to, we, we need to threaten. We need legal recourse. You said a hundred dollars a day times two. That's pretty good. That adds up pretty fast. Uh, I'm losing my computer. Hang on. It's getting late. I think we make a motion to adjourn. What does everyone think? Make a motion we adjourn. Thanks. Sounds good to me. All right. Yeah. Second that motion. Aye. I'll second it. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night. Good night, everybody. Never dull.